Today I want to share with you how to make 10 homemade seasoning blends from scratch, including a ranch dressing mix and an onion soup mix. Plus, I've got a special tip on how to make your onion soup mix extra special. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the shelf life of these seasoning blends. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture here in the United States, and the McCormick Spice Company concurs, is that a whole spice, uh, like an allspice berry or something along those lines, um, nutmeg and so on and so forth, the whole spice has a shelf life of four years. If you grind that spice up, it has a shelf life of somewhere between two and three years, depending on which spice it is. As to dried herbs, they have a shelf life somewhere between one and three years. So as to a seasoning mix that you may be making with herbs and spices, you're looking at the fact that it'll have a shelf life for at least one year. But after we bottle up our uh, first seasoning blend that we'll make, I'll show you a little tip that I like to take that I think helps extend the shelf life past that one year mark. But speaking in generalities, what if you find in your pantry that your spices or your herbs, your dried herbs, or any of these seasoning mixes have gone well past their quote unquote expiration dates? Do spices and dried herbs and seasoning blends actually go bad? Not really. They don't really go bad. What happens is they become stale and they lose their potency. So they don't have the same nice flavors they did when they were within their allowable shelf life. So what can you do so as to not waste? You know me, I don't like to waste. So what can you do if you find herbs and spices or seasoning blends in your pantry that have gone past what are considered their normal shelf life? Well, I've got a couple of tips for you. Number one, you can put your dried herbs and spices or your seasoning blends in a dry frying pan and just warm them up a bit, sort of toast them a little. That'll help sort of re-energize their flavors. Second, if you're making a recipe that involves where you're gonna fry up or saute something, you can put your fat into your frying pan, butter, oil, whatever you're using, and then put your seasonings right into that oil, into that hot oil or fat. Just cook that up a little and that will help revive their flavor as well. And then if you find any of your herbs and spices or your seasoning blends, whatever the case may be, are just really old, but you still don't want to throw them out, you can just mix them in with a potpourri and use them sort of as the binding agent to hold your essential oils or so on and so forth. And if all else fails, you can do what my mother always did. Whenever she would find spices in her uh, pantry that were well past any acceptable uh, shelf life date and had literally no flavor to them, she would sprinkle them between the stones that were her walkway in her garden. And it would kill any little weeds that were coming up uh, in her stone path. And it worked like a charm. Now the first blend, the first seasoning blend that we'll make is a taco mix. Uh, given that I'm in Texas, I think it's appropriate to start with that. Now what I'm gonna be putting my seasoning blend in is a six ounce uh, canning jar. This is just a tiny little one uh, because I'm just making a small amount. You can double, triple, quadruple these recipes, whatever you wanna do. But whatever you do, <laughs> whatever amount you make, you want to make sure that you do have some headspace in your jar that will allow you to give it a good shake before you use it. And the reason for that is, is we're not going to have anything like an anti-caking agent in here, which is often found when you buy in, in seasoning blends that you buy at the grocery store. So since they will be maybe separating or whatever the case may be, you'll want to be able to give them a good little shake uh, before you open the jar and take some out to use. 
And your jars don't need to be sterilized, but certainly you can have them sterilized if you want, like in the dishwasher. Um, but just keeping them nice and clean, washed with warm soapy water, allowed to air dry or dried with a clean towel is fine. Now for this taco mix, uh, what I have is a tablespoon of chili powder. We're going to talk about the chili powder in a minute, but I'll go through all the ingredients first. We've got a tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of coriander, a tablespoon of cumin, and a tablespoon of paprika. And this is just the sweet paprika. You can definitely use the smoked paprika if you want, but I prefer the sweet paprika. Now, as to the chili powder, you can use any chili powder that you want. Uh, often in the grocery store, you'll see just chili powder sold under that name, chili powder. Uh, but if you want to experiment and try a different specific chili powder, like an ancho chili powder or a chipotle chili powder, I highly recommend that. Chilies grow great here in Texas, and uh, I like to grow a lot in the backyard, and I grind them up and make my own chili powder, uh, or I'll put them in oil and make a chili oil, which I'll show you all of that in a future video. But right now, my favorite chili powder is ancho chili powder. And, you know, as I said, you can use any chili powder you want, but uh, my favorite is ancho, and then my second favorite is chipotle, which is basically a smoked jalapeno. So for this taco seasoning mix, I've got a tablespoon of ancho chili powder. Now, what you might notice that is noticeably missing is cayenne pepper. I am not adding any cayenne to this, but you can if you want. But I would recommend that if you're not used to a lot of spice or you don't like a lot of spice, I might just start with a quarter teaspoon for this amount and work your way up. But personally, I think using the ancho chili powder gives this mix plenty of spice. Next, to make life easy and avoid mess, I like to use some kind of funnel uh, to put over my jar as I put in all my spices. Now, if you have something like this, great. If not, don't worry. You can just get some parchment paper, some wax paper, a paper towel, whatever you have, and just make a little cone. Just roll it up like this and just put it in your jar like that, and then just use that as your funnel, uh, more or less, to get your spices into the jar. And once you get your paper into your jar for your funnel, you can just use a little paper clip like this. I'll turn that around to keep it together in case it's not naturally holding, and that'll, that'll give you a nice little funnel. Alrighty, now we'll get all of our taco seasoning mix right into our jar. Now to seal my jar, I like to just use the canning lid and the canning ring that came with my jars, but if you have those white plastic storage lids uh, that are also used for canning jars, you can use that as well. And then you're just going to give this a good shake just to incorporate everything. And now you've got your taco seasoning mix. And when you get ready to cook up, say, a pound of ground beef or a pound of ground chicken, uh, start with a teaspoon of this and work your way up to the amount that you like. But usually I recommend starting with a teaspoon. Now, depending on what type of jar you use, you can get fancy and use a little label maker and put exactly what this is uh, with using a label, or you can do what I do when I use these canning lids. I just take a little Sharpie and I just write the date on which I'm making it and what it is. Well, we're all done with our taco seasoning mix, and now we'll go on to making an Italian seasoning mix. Now, I tend to use a lot of Italian seasoning, so I'm going to make this in an 8-ounce jar so that, again, I have plenty of room to shake it and mix it up every time I go to use it. Now, I just want to mention, in the case of all of these seasoning blends, here, for example, in the Italian seasoning blend, I'm using dried herbs that have basically just been crushed up. Um, in the case of the dried rosemary, it's been chopped up. And you can go ahead and pulverize all of this if you want it to be a fine powder. Uh, but, you know, like, you know, you can pulverize it in a little spice grinder or something like that. But I like to keep it just as, it, as, as is, where it's, everything's just crumbled. Now for Italian seasoning, for me, oregano is the star of the show. 
And so I've got a quarter cup of dried oregano. Then I've got two tablespoons of marjoram. Now don't worry if you don't have marjoram. Uh, you may be able to find it at your local grocery store, but if you can't, don't worry. It's very similar to oregano. It's just got a little bit of a softer, milder flavor. So if you can't find marjoram, instead of two tablespoons of marjoram, substitute half of that in terms of oregano. So you would just add a tablespoon of oregano in addition to the quarter cup that you have here. Next, I've got two tablespoons of thyme, two tablespoons of basil, just a tablespoon of rosemary. You always have to be a little careful with rosemary because it is strong and it can become a little soapy f flavor and you don't want it to overpower the other wonderful uh, flavorings, especially of the oregano. And then finally, a tablespoon of sage. So we'll get our funnel and we'll go ahead and put in all of our beautiful Italian seasoning mix. And then again, I'm just going to use my canning lid and my canning ring, give it a good shake. And there we go, our Italian seasonings all done. And you can basically use this in any Italian dish that you're making, like a spaghetti sauce uh, that calls for Italian seasoning. Now specifically, if you want to go ahead and use this Italian seasoning for maybe um, when you're flavoring maybe a homemade sausage or you're making a bolognese sauce where you're using some ground sausage and some ground beef, you can go ahead and add some ground fennel seed to this to really give it that perfect taste that goes beautifully whenever you're using sausage in an Italian dish. And if you do decide that you want to add fennel to this, then you're just going to want to add one tablespoon of crushed fennel. Now, I just want to share with you what I was mentioning earlier. Uh, in order to uh, extend the shelf life of these homemade seasonings, each time I open it, or initially when I go to put it in my pantry, and then after that, each time I open it and use it, I love to use this little handheld food saver gadget to suck out all the air uh, before I put it back into my pantry. And it works like a charm. And I'll show you what I do. And this food saver device makes two sized caps uh, for pulling out the air. Uh, this is just for your regular mouth jar, and this is for your wide mouth jar. And today I don't need the wide mouth jar one, so I'll put that aside, and I'll just use the regular uh, jar size. And basically all you do is take your flat canning lid and put this right on top, and it just pushes right down. Now this lid that you put on top of your canning lid, uh, which is going to help us extract the air out using this little device. And this is just chargeable. You just plug it in and then it's got a nice little power to it. See? <laughs> and all you do is take the hole that's uh, on this device and line it up with the hole that's on this lid that extracts the air. And it's pretty easy to do because uh, I'll take a picture and overlay it, but you'll see there's a, a ring here and it sort of fits right exactly into that ring outline. And then you just start sucking out the air. Now, there is a, a slight change in sound, but you may not be able to hear it uh, over, the, over the video. But I'll show you how, it, how the lid will be very firm on once, it's, uh, once the air is sucked out. So you'll listen for that little bit of change in sound, and then you'll also notice that it's, it really makes a tight suction seal between the little machine and the lid. And then you'll just loosen that, you'll hear a little whoop, and then you just remove this top. And then once you remove that top, you'll see that this has a very tight seal. I can't loosen this with my hands. So I can just go ahead and store this in my pantry, just as is. Or if you want, you, you can put the ring on. It's really not necessary at this point. But then when I go to open it, I just take the dull end of a can opener and you'll hear the whoosh. See? <laughs> and hopefully that helps extend the shelf life of my dried seasoning mixes. I'll put a link to this in the description below, but be sure to look in your supermarket because sometimes they have this in the kitchen aisle and it's not very expensive at all. Well, now we've got our Italian seasoning all made and we'll move on to making herbs de Provence. Now, for making herbs de Provence, you may often see recipes that call for ingredients like savory and chervil, but they can be hard to find. Now, if you can find them at your grocery store, if you grow them in your garden, great. But if not, in this recipe, I omit them. 
But don't worry, you're not going to miss the flavoring of savory and chervil because we've got thyme in here, we've got parsley, uh, we've got sage, and we've got tarragon. And all of those in different combinations fill in very well uh, for those two herbs that can otherwise be hard to find. So what we've got for this Herbs de Provence seasoning blend is a tablespoon of thyme and here's a tablespoon of marjoram. Now don't worry if you don't have marjoram. That one is pretty easy to find at the grocery store, but in case you don't have it, don't worry. Uh, what you'll want to do is use oregano, but just use half the amount. So since we've got a tablespoon of marjoram here, you'll want to use a half a tablespoon of oregano. And then I've got a tablespoon of rosemary. And again, these are dried herbs. And then I've got a tablespoon of basil. I've got a tablespoon of sage, a tablespoon of parsley, and a tablespoon of tarragon. And then for the piece de resistance, which really tends to make Herbes de Provence very special, I've got a tablespoon of dried lavender flowers. Now, if you have them, great, but if you don't, don't worry. Uh, lavender grows very well here in Central Texas, and so it's easy to have dried lavender flowers. Um, if you can find them and buy them, great. If not, don't worry. They're sort of that little extra, uh, extra little bit uh, for, for the Herbes de Provence, but it'll be fine without it. And I'm just going to use a six ounce jar for this, and we'll go ahead and put all of our herbs in to make our lovely Herbes de Provence mixture. So I'm just going to seal this up, give it a good shake, label it, and we're all done with our Herbes de Provence. Now we'll move on to making our ranch dressing mix. Now to make the homemade ranch dressing seasoning mix, you're going to want to start with two tablespoons of dried parsley. And then to that, you'll want to add a teaspoon of dried dill and a teaspoon of dried chives. Then you'll need a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder. And next, I like to add two teaspoons of onion flakes. You can certainly leave these out if you want, but if you have them, I feel they add a nice extra bit of flavor and a little bit of texture. And then last, you need a teaspoon of sea salt, and this is a fine ground sea salt, and a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Now we'll go ahead and mix in all of our lovely herbs and spices here, and then I'll tell you how to make the dressing. And now we'll just give this a good shake. And as I said earlier, you can expand on this uh, recipe. This I'm just making small amounts, but you can double, triple, quadruple, whatever you want to do uh, based on how much you think that you'll use. Now to make a ranch dressing, what you'll want to do is take a half a cup of mayonnaise and a quarter cup of buttermilk, mix that up, and then add in starting with a teaspoon of your ranch dressing seasoning mix. And then work up from there up to potentially a tablespoon to see what flavor you like. Now if you don't have buttermilk, don't worry. Uh, you can use a little sour cream that you thin with milk or water to give you the consistency of buttermilk, or you can use a little yogurt uh, that also that you thin with a little milk or water to give you the consistency of buttermilk. Uh, and if you don't find buttermilk at your store, but you want to make buttermilk homemade, I have a recipe where I show you, or a video, where I show you how to make homemade cultured butter. And I'll link to that in the iCards and in the description below. And a byproduct of making cultured butter is cultured buttermilk. And that's real buttermilk. It's different than the cultured milk product uh, that's sold at the grocery store. And then you'd have your actual real homemade buttermilk, and you could use that for your dressing. And if you decide you want to use this to make a ranch dip, uh, basically the same thing. You can start with a half a cup of mayonnaise. Uh, you can then add in maybe a quarter cup of sour cream, uh, thin it with a little buttermilk. You can use Greek yogurt. There's all different variations. And then again, just start with a half a teaspoon of your seasoning mix and work up from there until you achieve the taste that you like. Now that we're finished with our ranch dressing mix, we're going to move on to making a pumpkin pie spice mix. And I'm also going to show you how to make an apple pie spice mix, but I'm counting that as one because they're quite similar. 
Now pumpkin pie spice and apple pie spice are very easy to make. And with the pumpkin pie spice, I'm making a very small amount of this. But as I've said, with all of these double, triple, quadruple, whatever you want to do. And basically for pumpkin pie spice, what you want to do is start with a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground allspice, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. Now you may be wondering, where's the nutmeg? I'm not a fan of nutmeg, so I usually leave it out of any recipe or spice mix that calls for it. But if you do like nutmeg, then what you'll want to do is in place of that quarter teaspoon of allspice, you'll want to use a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, because I don't like nutmeg, I make my apple pie spice a little differently. I like to use one tablespoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of allspice, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. And these are ground spices, that's ground cloves. Now, if you do like nutmeg, a more traditional mix would be the tablespoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a teaspoon of allspice. Now I'm just making small amounts of these spice mixes, so for these two I'm going to use a four ounce jelly jar. And again, just give them a good shake, label them, and you're all set. This is great pumpkin pie spice, obviously, for when you make pumpkin pie, or if you enjoy making pumpkin pie, what are they called, pumpkin pie lattes at home. Uh, th that's wonderful for that. And apple pie spice is great for, you know, obviously apple pie, but any apple dessert that you're making. And I even like to add this into oatmeal cookies. It's wonderful. Well, now that we've got these all done, we'll move on to making a homemade barbecue spice rub. Well, this is a very tasty homemade barbecue rub, and you can use this from ribs to brisket to chicken. It'll work perfectly on all of them. And the sweetener really helps, especially when you're using this as a rub on ribs. Now what you're gonna need are two tablespoons of paprika. You can use the sweet paprika or the smoky paprika, which either one you like. Next, you want a tablespoon of freshly ground black pepper and a tablespoon of salt. And I'm using a fine ground sea salt. Next, you'll want a tablespoon of chili powder. And again, you can use any type of chili powder you like. You can use the general one that just says chili powder on it if you're buying it at the grocery store, or you can use whatever chili powder you like. I'm using ancho chili powder. Then you're gonna to wanna to have a tablespoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of dried mustard powder. And then the star of the show is the sweetener. And I have just got the real sugar here, the dried cane juice. Sometimes you'll find it sold under the name Sucanat. But you could also use maple sugar if you have that, or you can just use light brown sugar if that's what you have. Now I'm gonna mix this all up in a pint-sized jar. Ah, <laughs> something's falling over. So we're gonna give this a good shake to incorporate. And now we're all done with our barbecue spice rub. And next I wanna share with you my house seasoning. Uh, it's a form of a seasoned salt and I think you're gonna like it. Now, as I just said earlier, this is what I call my house seasoning. It's basically a seasoned salt and I keep it, I make a big batch. I keep it in a big jar like this, uh, right by my stove top. And I pretty much use it on everything, uh, chicken, fish, meat, soups. And it's just nice and handy to have, to throw in some flavor to whatever I'm making without having to pull all the different herbs and spices off my shelf. Basically just throwing in a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of this, and it just adds a lovely boost of flavor. Basically what I do is start with two tablespoons of a fine ground sea salt. And to that, I add two tablespoons of sweet paprika. You know, again, as in the other uh, seasoning blends we've made today, you can use the smoked paprika or the sweet paprika. And then I've got a tablespoon of coarsely ground fresh black pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of dried parsley, and a teaspoon of dried oregano, and a teaspoon of dried thyme. So let's just go ahead now and mix all of this up. 
We'll give this a good shake and we're done with our house seasoning. And this is just a wonderful, versatile seasoning. I think you're gonna really enjoy this. Well, now let's move on and we'll make some great steak seasoning. Now this steak seasoning is very easy to pull together. All you're gonna to need to start is two tablespoons of salt. And what I've got here is a fine ground sea salt. And then you're gonna want two tablespoons of freshly ground black pepper. And I like to leave it on a real nice coarse ground uh, because that's perfect with steak. Then I've got a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of garlic powder, and a tablespoon of ground coriander. And I love coriander. Now you can leave this out if you want, but um, when the ground coriander, when the seeds, the coriander seeds are ground up, I just think they're so flavorful. They have like kind of an earthy, lemony flavor almost. And I think it just works beautifully on meat and especially steak. But if you want, you can leave that out. And then I also like to add in a tablespoon of crushed red pepper flakes. And again, if that's too much spice for you, you can certainly leave that out too. And now we'll just go and mix all this up together. We'll just shake this up. And now next time you're ready to make a steak, just give this a good sprinkling on both sides, throw it on the grill, and I think you're gonna be really pleased with the flavor. Now let's move on and make a lemon pepper, which is great on fish. Now lemon pepper couldn't be easier to make. Basically all you're gonna need in addition to salt and pepper is some lemon peel. Now you have some options on how you wanna add this into your lemon pepper. What I've got here is simply dried lemon peel that's been ground up but that still has some texture to it. Now you can buy this but it's also very easy to make. Just save your lemon peels and you can dry them either in a dehydrator or in your oven, they'll be as crisp as crackers, and then you can just grind them in a spice grinder to the consistency that you want. And I have a video where I show you how to do that, and I'll be sure to link to it in the iCards and in the description below. Now for lemon pepper, I like to use a nice coarse ground black pepper. So I like to keep my lemon peel kind of with a coarse ground texture but you can put that in a spice grinder and turn it into a lemon powder or a lemon peel powder, and that'll work the same way. That'll work fine too. And basically what I've got here are sort of two rounded tablespoons, you know, not quite heaping, but rounded tablespoons of the lemon peel and two tablespoons of the black pepper. You just want a little more lemon peel than you do black pepper. And then finally, just a teaspoon of salt and, whoops, my lemon peel's <laughs> falling down. Just a teaspoon of salt and I've got a fine ground sea salt here. And in they all go to get a nice mix. This is a joy to make. That lemon peel, it just smells so intoxicating. Now I'm just gonna give this a good shake and now this will be ready uh, to sprinkle on fish. You know, it's wonderful lemon pepper, it's wonderful on fish. It's also really delicious on chicken. Uh, so there's multiple uses for lemon pepper. Now we'll get ready to go on and make our onion soup mix. And I'll tell you a way to really pump up the flavor of that. Well, this onion soup mix is great for being a base to get an onion soup going or any beef flavored type soup. But I think one of the most common uses is to use this onion soup mix to make a dip. Now to use this onion soup mix to make a dip, you'll wanna take a half a cup of mayonnaise and a quarter cup of sour cream, mix that up, and then add a teaspoon of this mix to that mayo sour cream mix. Now you wanna start with a teaspoon, give it a taste, and work your way up to a tablespoon or more till you get the flavoring that you like. Now in place of sour cream, you can also use um, a Greek yogurt or even a regular yogurt. That'll work too for making a nice dip. Now what you're gonna to need to make this onion soup mix is three tablespoons of dried minced onion. And this can be something that you bought in the store or onions that you diced yourself and then dried in the dehydrator. Uh, or sometimes you can dry them in the oven. It's a little, it can be a little difficult depending if, if your oven doesn't really go low enough. Um, also do, I have a recommendation that if you do decide to do this in your dehydrator, uh, maybe put it in the garage or outside because it will make a very strong aroma in your home. And the next thing that you're gonna need for this onion soup mix is some type of beef bouillon. Now there are beef bouillon cubes that are sold in the grocery store. I'm usually not a fan of them. Sometimes they have a lot of ingredients in them that, that I really don't wanna use in my kitchen. 
Um, if you if that's all you have uh, available to you, uh, see if you can find one with the least ingredients as possible, maybe beef and salt <laughs> and not too much more. But I like to make my beef bouillon homemade. And I have a video where I show you how to do that. And it's really not very difficult. Um, I'll link to it in the iCards and in the description below. Uh, basically what I do is I take some beef bone broth and I just dehydrate it. And you don't need special equipment. Yes, you can do it in your dehydrator, but it, it dries up beautifully in the oven as well. And then once it's nice and dry, you just put it in some sort of blender or spice grinder, grind it up, and you've got your own homemade beef bouillon. And the nice thing about making your own homemade beef bouillon is that there's nothing else in it, number one. And number two, you can control how much salt that's in it, that's in this onion soup mix, because your beef bouillon is not going to have any, the homemade beef bouillon is not going to have any salt in it. So you control, uh, when you use this in a recipe like this or anything else, you control how much salt you want to add. And what I've got here are two tablespoons of my homemade beef bouillon. If you're using the cubes, you may need about three or four of them. Crush them up. Um, the bottom line is you want to get about two tablespoons of uh, pulverized beef bouillon. Next, you'll want a teaspoon of onion powder. And then if you're using your homemade beef bouillon, you're going to want to add a teaspoon of salt. If you're using the beef bouillon cubes uh, that you buy at the store that already have the salt in them, you don't want to add any extra salt. And I'm using a fine ground sea salt, so that's a teaspoon of fine ground sea salt. And then last but not least, all you need is a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Now I just want to share a tip with you about really pumping up the flavor, but also the nutrition of a homemade onion soup mix. Whenever you peel onions for a recipe, save the skins. Now, I know I always tell you to save these, you know, for your um, bone broth, but also put some aside and save them, you know, in a plastic bag or whatever container you have for when you make onion soup mix. And the reason is you're gonna take these onion peels, which are high in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, all good things, and you're gonna dry them in your oven. You can also dry them in a dehydrator. And it doesn't take long. I mean, they're, like they say, onion skins. They're paper thin. And just dry them on the lowest setting. If you're using an oven, just put it on your lowest setting possible and just keep an eye on it. You know, basically you want them to get to the point where they crack, you know, just like a cracker. It may take a couple of hours. Then take these onion skins and pulverize them in one of those little spice grinders. And then you can use this to uh, add extra to your uh, onion soup mix or to be part of uh, your onion powder or to completely replace your onion powder. It's totally up to you, but they have flavor and they have nutrition. And again, it's so nice, nothing goes to waste. Well, now we'll just go ahead and mix all of these together. And then we've got this wonderful homemade onion soup mix. I really love the fact that uh, we can use a homemade beef bouillon in here. That's just perfect. And we'll just put this lid on. I'll label it up in a minute, but we'll just give it a good shake. And then there we go. Onion soup mix homemade. Well, if you'd like to learn about more homemade pantry items, be sure to click on this video over here where I show you how to make 10 natural flavored extracts. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.